Before My Heart Gives Out by Kira 18 on AO3 Chapter 8 Unforeseen Action The bell at the front store rings as a new customer enters the coffee shop. A whisk of cold air enters the room, disturbing the cozy atmosphere held inside. Izuku instantly knows who is the person rapidly approaching the counter he's currently cleaning. I'm in. The boy shouted, excitedly. His voice holding a giddiness Izuku loved to hear in his friend's voice. Yeah, Shinso, I kind of figured that, you know, with my fences and everything. He gestured vaguely to his face, emphasizing the word fences. Besides, the bell blew your cover. The greenette snickered lowly. What? Shinso stepped, seemed to falter for a minute, before straightening out, excited once more. No, I don't mean here, you idiot. The exasperation in his tone was plausible. I got in. I passed the exam. And he took his mind. He liked to picture Shinso as an overly enthusiastic puppy. At least, every once in a while, when the teen wasn't acting like a tired house cat. You got in. Wait, as in... Do you mean... Yue, I got into the hero course. Oh, shit! You got in! I got in! They kept screaming their heads off until Miss Eleanor threw them both out of the store, yelling at Izuku to calm down if he wants to keep his job. They were both too happy to pay her any mind, though. Shinso had passed the exam. He was going to UA. He was going to be a hero. As much as he wanted to celebrate with Shinso, Izuku had work to do. He couldn't help the happiness that overwhelmed him for the next few days, though. His best friend got what he always wanted, what Izuku himself had yearned for for so long. He was one step closer to his dream, and Izuku couldn't be prouder. This, however, meant they didn't get to spend a lot of time together anymore. Shinso had school in the morning, and Izuku couldn't hang out at night. His other occupations taking up most of his time. Shinso was currently at school, anyways. A field trip or something like that? Izuku didn't push for information, Shinso only telling him that it was somewhere on campus. At least one of them was getting the whole high school experience. It didn't matter, though. He had a job to do, after all. So that's where Izuku was now, following a lead he got from one of the underground informants. The League of Villains were up to something. Word on street was that they were planning an attack. Something big and soon. Where and how, that's what Shadow was currently trying to find out. The last time a man of Shigaraki's description was spotted was when he was entering a bar. Therefore, Izuku opted to keep an eye on the area for the last couple of days. When starting his little improp stakeout, Izuku expected at most to spot a couple of villains, Shigaraki and a couple of lackeys. However, what he didn't expect was to see four dozen villains beginning filling into a small building in groups. Something big was definitely going down, and it was happening sooner than he thought. Narrowing his eyes at the building in concentration, Izuku realized that everything was not as it seemed. The villains' heat signatures were all wrong. Given the sheer amount of people who entered the bar, the heat signatures marching the inside were supposed to be twice as many. But something wasn't right. On a closer look, the heat signatures seemed to be dwindling in numbers, too. The number of people inside decreasing, yet no villain was spotted actually coming out of the building. His mind flashed to the events from a few weeks ago. Shigaraki had vanished by getting into some kind of mist. Teleportation quirk. Izuku's mind supplied. Which meant... If Izuku was reading this correctly, the villains were getting into the bar, only to teleport to another location shortly after. The attack had already started. But where? Hopping down from his perch on the roof of the building, adjacent to the bar, he made his way closer, his ears straining to catch any pit of planning along the side. He didn't wait for those kids. An unvoiced spoke darkly. Yue won't know what hit him. A familiar gruff voice responded, glee and pride from Shigaraki's tone. 
Tamara, are you sure they're going to be at the USJ? The voice was distorted, the words echoing as if they were spoken from a hollow space. He supposed that it belonged to the Miss Villain. The man's heat signature was deeper and wider than his others. The form flickering in and out of existence as if it was made of burning flames. The sight would be quite mesmerizing if it weren't for the fact that Izuku's heart was currently hammering in his chest. The thought of Shinso being in danger made his blood boil. Yue was under attack, and Izuku would be damned if he let the villains hurt these kids. His feet pounded against the concrete rooftops as he ran at full speed, leaping from one building to another. His heart thumped against his chest, his breath coming out in frantic huffs, a great contrast to the rhythm tapping of his feet as he tried his hardest to reach the fight in time, his mind going through a thousand possible outcomes he might stumble upon, each one harsher than the last, flashes of his friend, dead and invisible to his eyes, no heartbeat, no heat to detect, no rising of the chest, nothing. He picked up his speed, his heart stuttering for a second as the UA campus came into view. Shinso mentioned that the field trip was on campus. He couldn't be too far away, right? Hoping his plan would work, he took a deep breath and concentrated. At first, he focused on finding the place with the most heat signatures, ignoring the main building, full of students and teachers. His senses zero in on a building in the shape of a dome. He could feel the heartache starting to overwhelm him, but he pushed the thought away. He could hear multiple voices now. Class 1A students were all around on guard, their hearts beating faster than normal in their class. This meant the villains had arrived. Finally, his senses landed on a familiar heartbeat of his friend. He didn't wait a second longer before he took off, ignoring the nosebleed he was surely he currently sported. Detective Naosama, Naomasa, Detective Naomasa speaking, came the familiar voice on the other end of the call. Detective, I need you to send heroes to this address. He stated, trying to get his voice as even as possible to get his point across. Shadow, wait, slow down. We don't have time. UA is under attack from the League of Villains. Class 1A is trapped at the USJ. I'm going to go in as soon as I end this call, but I'm going to need help if we want to save everyone. He could hear the detective's sharp intake of breath, along with the curse he unknowingly hissed out. I can feel something surging the dome. Someone is blocking the communication lines. You won't be able to reach me after I go in. Shadow, wait. You can't go in there alone. Wait for backup. I'm requesting... Interrupting the detective again, Izuku continued. There are children in there, outnumbered and afraid. I'm not just going to stand here and wait. With that, he stuffed his phone back into his utility pouch. Without further delay, he crashed into the USJ dome glass, shattering around him as he landed in a roll, instantly back on his feet. A couple of students standing to his left at his feet laid a prolonged figure, injured but alive. The students two girls, and a boy, stared at his violent entrance, but seemed to recognize him as an ally, relief, evident in their posture. I called for help. They won't be long now. Get out through the hole I made and wait for the police. He shouted over his shoulder, ignoring their shouts of protest as he ran down. His vision instantly zeroed on Shigaraki's figure. The man was fighting a racer head. His hand lashed onto the hero's elbow. Aizawa's skin was already starting to disintegrate under the villain's touch. With a shout of anger, he kicked the villain away, enjoying the yell the man let out as he was pushed to the ground unceremoniously. Eraser, help is on the way. We just have to hold out until then. He could feel the man's shoulders loosen some after their stiffness, although he was still on guard. Other villains were closing in on them, surrounding them. Shadow. You shouldn't be here. Azawa gritted out as they dodged an attack from one of the villains surrounding them. I think a lot of people that are here shouldn't be here right now, Eraser. He quippled back as he knocked out one of the thugs charging at him. Besides, you need all the backup you can get. 
Aizawa didn't bother with a response, instead opting to huff as he kicked back another villain. They were standing back to back now, dodging and fighting in a way that spoke volumes of the trust they had garnered between them. In the meantime, Shigaraki had managed to get back to his feet. His anger was hellable even from here. You brat! How dare you interrupt my plans! The villain bellowed, his hand scratching at his neck in frustration, the movements becoming borderline hysterical. The thugs surrounding them were almost all taken care of. Only a couple were left, easy enough for Aizawa to deal with. Shigaraki, give it up. The heroes are on their way. You can't win this. Let them come. The symbol of peace will go down today, and if it takes killing a couple of brats in the process, all the better. The man screamed. I'm gonna have fun torturing you into dust, Shadow. Shigaraki charged at him at a nearly inhuman speed, his hands outstretched, quirk at the ready. Shadow wasn't going to make it that easy for him, though. Diving out of the way, he reached for his emerald sticks, the weapon coming up just in time to block the villain's next attack. Shigaraki's attacks were getting sloppier with each movement, the man's frustration growing with each dodge and every attack Izuku responded with. Izuku would have smirked if the situation wasn't so dire. He still hadn't seen Shinzo. Sliding under a roundhouse kick, he swept the man's foot out from under him, effectively knocking him down. Azawa had joined him then, the man standing to his left, having already disposed of Shigaraki's lackeys. You're gonna regret this, the man hissed as he staggered back to his feet. Nomu! Before he could even question what a Nomu was, a creature stepped out of the portal, its muscular body hulking over them mononically. Oh. Was all he could get out, his gaze concentrated on the new threat. Shadow? Shiraki spoke lowly. Meet our most prized creation, Nomu. The grin he was sporting was evident in his tone. How about a demonstration of its powers? Shigaraki's words were punctured by a hand gesture. In a flash, the Nomu was on them. Before Izuku could register what was happening, he was being pushed out of the way. His breath was knocked out of him. His world floored for a second. However, he couldn't miss what happened next. A guttural scream resounded in his ears, a sound that he knew would haunt his dreams for a long time. Aizawa's hand was being twisted by the Nomu at an unnatural angle, the Nomu barely putting any effort into snapping the hero's arm. Bile rose in his throat, the smell of blood and gore reaching his nose. Aizawa had pushed him out of the way. He'd saved him and put himself in danger instead. This was all his fault. He needed to do something. Don't worry, little vigilante. I'm done with your friend. For now. Shigaraki cooed darkly. However, it seems we have new players joining the party. It would be rude not to include them. That's when he sensed it. Felt it. At the opposite side of his position said Shinzo and another student. Both of them crouched low to the ground, trying to sneak past the two villains. His stomach dropped at the inflexation, his mind flashing back to the dead body of his friend, although now he could imagine the Nomu smashing his friend's skull into the ground. He couldn't, wouldn't let that happen. He ran before Shigaraki even got the chance to give the order. He was already halfway there when he felt the ground vibrate at his side. Giving it everything he had, he leaped at his friend, evidently putting himself between the Nomu and the two kids. His body acted as a shield against the hulking creature set on killing them. Pain, unlike anything he's felt before, enveloped him, taking over all his senses at once. His whole world reduced to nothing but one excruciating feeling. He could feel his ribs cracking under the power of the Nomu's fist, bile spilling from his mouth, his stomach unable to hold it in. His head, 
cracked against the ground hard. His senses blurred together as he tried to focus on the world around him, focus on anything other than the agony that was overwhelming him. I'd hope to do that, Shigaraki called out, enjoying the havoc he was wrecking. Although I hate to break it to you, little shadow, but your friends are going to die anyways. With every last bit of strength he had left, he tried to sense what Shigaraki meant. Vaguely, he could see Shigaraki's form approaching the two stunted students on the ground, hound outstretched, toward the girl's face. A predator approaching his prey. Izuku has never felt more helpless, useless to the world. Five fingers made contact with her face. A beat. Nothing. Eraser. You're so cool, eraser head. Shigaraki redacted his hand right as the entrance to the dome burst open in a storm of dust and debris. All might, followed by a dozen heroes, strode into the dorm, all of them surrounded by an aura of anger and fury. Izuku let his spinning head fall back to the ground in relief. His call to Sikuchi worked. Backup was here. The events that happened next were lost to the vigilante. His concentration, preoccupied with the need to stay awake, keep breathing. His powers weren't cooperating anymore. Vaguely, he could feel someone talking to him. The voice gruff and familiar, yet the identity of the person just out of his reach. You okay? The voice asked. You need to stay awake. Another set of hands came to rest on his shoulders. He tried to struggle to push them away. His attempts were futile. It's me. Calm down. The voice was closer than the last, tone wavering. Was that worry? It's me, Shinzo. Azawa says we have to get you to the ambulance. The relief that came with the fact that Shinzo was alive and unharmed quickly vanished as soon as he remembered just where he was. I can't. His voice felt like gravel against his throat, the taste of iron coming to the rest of his tongue. And no, no hospital. I need, I need to get out before. <coughs> Wet coughs found their way out of his mouth. He heroes, Shadow, you're injured and bleeding. You need help. A razorhead's voice sounded pained, a hit of anger in his tone. I'm f fine. Disregarding the shouts of protest and the hands trying to hold him down, he got up to his feet, trying his best to ignore the surging pain flaring in his ribs and head. He doesn't know how he got out. He doesn't register his body fighting against anything to stand in his way. He just knows that the next time he gains a little bit of awareness, he's staggering into an empty alley, his back hitting the side of a dumpster. He knows he can't stay here. He knows that he needs to get back to the warehouse and tend to his wounds. Yet his limbs are unresponsive. His body feels like lead, too heavy to move, and his mind screams at him to rest, to just let go. The only thing he could do, before his mind and body give up on him, is get his phone out of his pocket. He barely has it in his hand before it slips right out, hitting the ground with a resoluting clink. His arms flop uselessly to the ground next to it. Then he plunges into darkness, deeper than he's ever known. All right, we're gonna pretend like it didn't start crying during the recording of that. There's a certain moment we could start hearing it in my voice. If you could pin it out, you win, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I started crying. I'm not crying anymore. That's a lie. There's tears in my eyes, but they're not coming out and it's not affecting my voice. So we're going to call that a win. So I want to talk about, you know, the funny, nice moments that happened in the beginning. You know, Shinzo getting into UA. Ah, yay, fun, fun. And then, you know, Izuku finds about the USJ and then he goes and he saves the day. Amazing, you know, wonderful. I just saw the author's note. That's why I threw that. The author's note is, the next few chapters are going to get worse for a little green bean. What do you mean worse? I'm crying. <laughs> this fanfic is going to fucking wreck me. It's going to fucking 
wreck me. I have never read a fanfic where Izuku dies at the end for a reason. Because I'm like, I don't think I'll be able to survive that. I don't think I'll be able to not sob. And I'm like, there's no way. I would never do that. And I'm like, ah, oh, funny. I just won't get attached to this story. I just won't get attached. I won't be the one hurting. It'll be my viewers. It'll be a funny haha -ha moment. No, it's not. <sighs> okay, now that I took a breath and I'm not about to cry. Let's talk about Izuku's rescue. I'm worried about him. Sorry, I can't talk about that. He is passed out in an alley. He probably has a concussion. He's passed out in an alley. He's he's unconscious. You're not supposed to be unconscious when you're concussed. And 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 I God fucking damn it. I just wanted to be in the fucking hospital. I want him to get the help he needs. I need him to get the help he needs. Like Izuku, Izuku. My boy, my baby, please, please stop doing this to yourself. You're worrying everybody. You're worrying everybody. Shinso's worried. Aizawa's worried. Sikuichi's worried. All the students are probably worried. They don't even know you. And they're probably worried. All the heroes on the scene are probably worried. They're, we're worried. Us viewers are worried. I'm worried. We're worried. I'm getting a little heated. <laughs> So getting a little emotional and also as i was reading this the, the the thought hit me you know what would be amazing if you know you know in the end you know obviously i got spoiled i know how Izuku dies i know when Izuku dies so <laughs> amazing wonderful but like if that thingy did not happen i i think it would have been super super interesting to see and i wonder if that in that alternate timeline which i really want to pot pick that one too after this heartbreak in that alternate timeline, if Izuku ends up getting quote unquote cured by Eri, like all the chemicals are right. And if that, like if Eri does that, does that then reduce, like how would that work? Would Eri be able to save him? Would Eri not be able to save him? Would it just revert him back to his 10 year old body? If so, that's weird. Or would he, she be able to like, um, just take away his, um, the chemicals in his, but like, is there a healing quirk that could probably maybe help him? There is hope out there for my boy and I'm hoping out for the for the for the small kind of sequel that is not a sequel because it's just a what if I love that what if and I'm gonna treat that what if as the canon all right this this isn't canon before my heart gives out isn't canon the other one is this one isn't <laughs> as always my raindrops make sure to eat sleep drink a lot of water because this fanfic is making us cry a lot don't forget to take your meds antidepressants you better take them this is gonna get you depressed um have a wonderful day or night join our community discord server link is in the description so are my socials subscribe to see more of my content i don't even know my intro goodbye i love you guys i'm crying